Today in this class we will learn what are the functions of communication. Does it have any function or nothing? So theor theoretically speaking on four functions are identified in the field of communication. What are they? The most basic function of communication is to inform. That means any bit of communication whether verbal or non-verbal is functionally oriented towards informing you people about something. You may be just walking across the aisle of the college and you suddenly see a notice board saying that no smoking. That board is not actually not talking to you. But it is communicating, it is informing that this is not the place for smoking. You see that? So every bit of communication is having a very basic function to inform. The second is to educate. That means another primary function of communication is to educate its receiver. That means little more than just providing information. The third and critical is to persuade. That means you want that person to follow what is being told. And third is to integrate. That means that person should identify himself as a part and parcel of that system. So there are four basic functions. One is to inform. The other is to educate. Third is to persuade. And finally to integrate. Let us take an example. We hear a lot of information about health practices and many a times we are exposed to a lot of information of medical problems we are facing. So let us take one simple case H1N1 as a disease. I mean, Probably everyone is aware of what is H1N1. It is because of a virus. So when we are exposed to material on H1N1 the primary purpose of that material either in the form of a news report or a health program on television or radio or a brochure or a leaflet you, you will get from the health department is to inform you about what is this disease is all about. Apart from informing that program, that brochure or that content is also trying to educate you how to deal with the situation in case you are in or you are exposed to. Then it will also persuade you to take some action either to prevent the disease or to see how to solve in case the, the disease is already there with you. And finally, it will integrate you in such a way that you totally understand the entire concept and you become a part and parcel of that communication. So, communication has four basic functions to inform, to educate and to affect changes or persuade people and finally to integrate people. So, these are the four basic functions of communication. And lastly, we will talk about barriers to communication. What are the barriers? So don't think that communication is just free flowing water. No. It is subjected to a number of barriers. The first and foremost important barrier is sender receiver barrier. What is a sender receiver barrier? Probably the way I am encoding the message is may not be clear to you. Or the way you are decoding the message of what is being given to you may not be very clear. So here we are suffering from a psychological barrier in terms of encoding and decoding the message. Or we might suffer from the problem of encoding, decoding the message due to our past experience. 
Oh, you might say, oh, this I am aware of. Who cares for your lecture? I can take any book, I can read, I can understand. What does it mean? That means you are affected by past experience of your barrier as a barrier to you. So, sender, receiver is an important barrier in the field of communication. The next barrier is associated with the channel. What is called as noise. You may ask me, you are delivering a lecture in front of us. What is the noise here? Yes, you can easily understand the concept of noise if you are listening to something on radio or television or reading something in a newspaper. But in an interpersonal communication situation like this, what is the kind of noise I am talking about? Anyway, before trying to explain, to explain that to you people, let me tell you what is this noise is all about. Noise is a very simple obstruction that is created in the process of communication, whether it is interpersonal in nature or whether it is mediated. In interpersonal communication, the noise is created because of semantics. That means probably my pronunciation is not good. The words that are being used by me are not appropriate. This creates a verbal noise. In terms of channel, the noise is because of the technology. Probably when you are seeing this lecture, the DVD player or the, the internet may not function properly, then, then there is a kind of a blurring of image and that's noise. When you are listening to radio, the radio may go dead for a while and that's the channel noise. So noise is an important barrier in the field of communication, either in the form of semantics or in the form of channel noise. Then we have barrier in feedback. I may be lecturing for hours and hours together and absolutely no feedback, no questions asked, no doubts for clarification. What does the teacher say at that point of time? Oh guys, either you are understood completely or you are not understood anything. What does it mean? That means there is a barrier in the feedback itself. So that's why I told you feedbacks acts as a very critical component in the field of communication because it helps us to modify the content, modify the delivery process and even modify our own behavioral process in the communication. So feedback is also a barrier where absolutely there is no feedback or maybe over feedback which comes out as a noise. Then there is also a barrier which is related to context what we call it as frame of reference. Imagine a situation, I say that I am going to deliver a lecture on communication theories and I start talking about field experiment. I mean, these two subjects are completely different. So that itself creates a barrier. You might start asking, teacher you said you are going to deliver a lecture on communication theories and you are talking about experimental research designs. What is this? That means I am going out of context for delivering a message. 